What's up, everybody? Brian Mann here, Hands-On Auto Training. This is the end of day, January 12th, 2022. I'm still getting used to saying 2022. We're getting there. It'll roll off the tongue soon. I hope everybody's doing great. Uh, I had an awesome day. I really had a, a lot of uh, fun diagnostic challenges. Nothing too hard, but uh, follow along. You'll see what's up. Guys, don't forget, we're giving away uh, four more U-scopes over the next two months uh, to anybody who signed up for the core or premium membership. So be sure to check that out, and you'll be entered in to win... Uh, the drawing just so you know mario uh i do have your u-scope in the mail tomorrow morning it will be going out i apologize for the delay but we'll get that out so today starting out with the 2004 chevy express guys this vehicle i i don't know the history on it i've never touched it before but the shop's been having problems with it and it's not an actual repair shop it's more of a um a fleet account or whatever you want to call it and they've been working on it themselves they've replaced a couple of computers all kinds of parts thrown at this thing so i got there to program a computer this morning and i programmed the computer did a security learn 10 minute learn and of course it won't start even before i got the security learn done i knew something was up because usually these things will start and stall and uh, this didn't even start it just you know cranked so it would sputter sometimes anyhow I started looking around at different uh, parameters. I thought I might have had a restricted exhaust, actually, the way it sounded a couple times. So uh, I was talking to them about that. Here the vehicle had just been stolen, and they just recovered it. And the catalytic converters were already chopped off, and somebody uh, just put straight pipes on there. So, hey, whatever. Uh, whatever you can get away with, right? So it couldn't have a restricted exhaust unless it was back in the muffler or, you know, behind the uh, where the converters were. It was, like I said, straight piped. So I was poking around, looking at different data. And this thing just had too many things that weren't adding up. I did spray some uh, brake clean down the intake to see if it would go boom. If you spray uh, something flammable down the intake and it doesn't run, uh, well, then I'm thinking a spark issue. Well, this thing had uh, a couple things going on. It had contaminated fuel. Check this out. Uh, this is just after a few minutes of sitting there. And also the plugs got all fouled out. So we pulled a couple plugs and uh, this is what we have. This thing needs to get some plugs. I told them to go ahead and remove all the spark plugs, crank it over, blow some of that crap out of the cylinder with the fuel pump relay disconnected, drop the tank, clear out the lines, and we'll go from there. Next up, we got ourselves a old school Bonneville. This has got the 3800 Series 2 Classic here. As you see, we got a new coil. I think it's had two ignition modules and a new crank sensor put on. I don't know if you guys can see, uh, but it does look kind of new down there. We'll see. If that zooms for you. No, maybe not. Dang. I'll get that better. But anyhow, uh, this is a crank start stall situation. It fires up and then stalls out right away. So I'll show you. Uh oh. There we go. So crank start stall. It'll always start. Run for just a minute, or should I say a couple seconds, and it stalls out. Now, let me see if that security light goes out. So you do our bulb check. Interesting. Time to take a look at all the codes. Okay, our codes right off the bat here. We got a P0101 mass airflow sensor and a throttle position uh, sensor performance. So this 121 is interesting. I don't know about that in the 101. Let's take a look here. Going old school. We actually got a throttle cable. I love the good old days, guys. That's awesome. Classic stuff. Someday kids aren't going to know what a throttle cable is, right? All right, so we've got our throttle position sensor right here. I can see that. It's plugged in. And our mass airflow sensor is here. I'm wondering if we don't have an issue with a harness or something going on. I may just go ahead and disconnect the mass airflow sensor and see if it runs, just because I'm curious. I'm that type of guy, I guess, right? Let's see. And it's, okay, it ran for a while and stalled again. Let me try and disconnect this. As soon as I hit the gas, it stalled out. Let me try this one more time. This is weird. Okay, so I feel like as soon as I hit the throttle, this thing dies. I hit the gas, and it's dying right away. So let's take a look. 
Let's back the truck up here and take a look at our scan tool data. Engine data display, engine data one. I do have that mass airflow disconnected, like I said. Now let's take a look at this throttle position. 0.39 volts. Right, let me go ahead and see. I'm gonna go ahead and push the gas pedal here. And uh, I guess it does read okay. 0.39, I'm watching that. Slowly go here. So take a look at this map sensor uh, reading right here. It's reading 29 kPa, key on, engine off. Guys, that should be closer to 98, 99 or so, right? Maybe 101, depending on, you know, sea level and barometric pressure and all that stuff. But that is no good. All right, guys, so I'll be honest with you. I was poking around on this thing, and I've had many bad mass airflow sensors cause vehicles to stall. i to tap on that see if anything happens. But I disconnected it, it's still started installed. I've had PCV valves, uh, O-rings get stuck in there, it's not the case. Uh, then that's right underneath here. That didn't happen, this thing seems to be running all right. Um, I did disconnect this, I checked for five volts at our map sensor, I checked for five volts at our throttle position sensor. Uh, and rumor has it, don't let this thing go, it'll come back. So I plugged those sensors back in, it still started installed. And I looked at my fuel trims, I didn't see anything going on there, but I cleared the codes and reset the fuel trims, and now we got a runner. I know for a fact I didn't fix anything here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that and see if we see anything uh, popping out at us. So our fare is at 34. I really think something with uh, the airflow or the fuel metering is what's causing this thing to stall. So let's see if we've got any code setting yet. Actually, I'm going to turn it off. You see we've been running for two minutes. Let me turn it off, start it back up, make sure we still got ourselves a runner. little bit of a hesitation or stumble there. Didn't feel great. Try that one more time. Up, Brian? Hey, how are you? All right, it feels a little uneasy. Um, a little bit of a sag or hesitation there. Feels good on the throttle now. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, Let's exit out of here and rear codes real quick. No codes. So we had a 121 and a 101. All right, guys, I don't like our map sensor reading. Now that's with it unplugged, 0.02 volts, but it should be around four volts, I think, with, with it plugged in. If we go here, Plug this thing in, we're only at 1.08 volts. I think we should be closer to four volts. 31 kPa, it should be reading the same as the barrel right now. now. I don't know where that barrel value is coming from. I thought it was right off the map. But we're gonna go ahead and get a new sensor coming and see what the heck happens here. And we'll know really quickly too, just by plugging it in, key on engine off, what's up. Oh, it broke in half. I think it's bad. What do you guys think? Busted it right in half. Okay, we got our new standard part here. Let's go ahead and see if this fits. I've had many of these things in the past that didn't fit right, but that felt pretty good. Can't complain about that. Reroute this guy over here so it ain't pulling on it. There we go. Well, let's go ahead and turn the key on and see what our voltage is. We're expecting around four volts or so. 465, that's nice, I like that. So let me go to my DTCs and uh, just see what we have. I know we should have a map sensor open. 107, 1107, 107. Let's go ahead and clear these out. And this 
was a very intermittent stall sometimes for this customer. They left the, uh, left the shop or whatever multiple times. I think they weren't really having it diagnosed. They're just having somebody put parts on for them. And uh, okay, we've got ourselves a clean slate. I'm gonna go ahead and we'll go back to our data list. Sensor 465, beautiful, barrels 99. So as we start this thing up, we should have a value that goes down. That was a fast start there. I'm looking for it to go down about 30 something kPa. We're at 41. It's not terrible. I think we're all set here. Next up we got a 2008 Dodge Charger. This is setting a P. 2096, I believe. Let's double check that. Let's see here. Uh, what do I got here? I'm gonna go back. Yeah, P2096. Gotta check engine light on. Um, kinda wanna go to the live data. Let's take a look at our field trims here. Live data. Closed loop, closed loop. Let's go ahead and take a look at our field trims here. Negative six plus nine, negative 12 plus three. Not terrible, uh, taken back a little bit. I gotta go look and identify on this code, but I gotta tell you, um, just poking around, I can see this air fuel sensor here has been changed. Uh, the, bat, the lower one, way on the bottom, maybe you can see it shiny or not. Let me try and zoom in on that for you. There you go, that, that O2 sensor has been changed. This one's original. But there is an exhaust leak here. When I opened up the hood on this vehicle, I could actually smell exhaust. Um, I really think we might have something like that going on causing an issue. I busted out the all-tail here because this thing was running and it started surging really funny. And I went inside the vehicle and we did have a lightning bolt, uh, you know, the throttle body light on. So I want to double check, make sure we don't have any other coats. Because as you see, this is a shiny new throttle body. That thing's brand new. I'm not sure what else was replaced on this thing. Go to diagnosis, and uh, at this point, I'm just gonna go to the control unit. I want to go to powertrain, take a look what's in here. Recodes. Okay, 2173. So we got uh, 2096 and a 2173 here. 2173, high airflow volume leak detected. Hmm. Okay, I'm glad I went ahead with the Autel and got that 2196 code. I did peek around on Identifix and they said uh, the EGR tubes leak on these. Uh, I'm not familiar, this is a new one for me. First time I got the chance to see it, but check that out. We're smoking this here and you can clearly see we've got our EGR tube leaking. Let me see if I can get in there for you. The EGR uh, tube comes up and goes into the intake right there. There's got to be O-ring, either the intake's damaged or or we got ourselves a another problem. But I think the other code is due to uh, due to the exhaust leak. Next up, we got ourselves a 15 Denali. This has a side object detection module replaced, I believe. We're gonna go ahead and do a pre-scan on this to make sure what's going on and go from there. Okay, I'm hoping the glitter doesn't cut into it too bad here. The only codes in this whole vehicle, if you see here, are in the left side object detection module. So we're gonna click on details. And we have code saying that uh, software's not programmed. VIN not programmed and software not programmed. We're gonna create a pre-report uh, so we can save this for our customer. Always a good thing to do. We're gonna go ahead and launch our SPS2 and we're gonna go into replace and reprogram. Next. Side object sensor module left. And next and vehicle options. And does it have RPO, UFT, UFG? I don't know, let's find out. And this does have UFG. Okay, you're going into RPO selection tool and uh, tech line connect. So we do have UFG. And I believe when we look at our mirror here, you can see the object detection is in the mirror too. 
All right, we're gonna go ahead and hit the next button here. And I'll take a picture of this for our records. Start parading. And we're off to the races. And this one's taking a long time to get started. We'll see what happens here. Still waiting. There it goes. Finally started. This thing's going slow. Well, it sure is being a long one. We're uh, 10 minutes in here. Still got two minutes to go. And it's looking like this is going to be a 12 minute program here. This thing took a while. I was really surprised. Let's see. Hopefully it finishes right. Every once in a while you get a GM that takes forever and it airs out at the end. Processing the update. Okay. Well, let's see. There we go. We're going to double check all of our codes. And I will take a peek at the service information to make sure there's nothing else that's required, but this should be all set here. And hopefully you guys can see, we don't have any DTCs listed. I'm gonna click on create report and print this for our customer. And there you have it, no more messages or lights on on this thing. All right, next up we got ourselves a 2011 Chevy Silverado. This has a replacement engine control module. Oh, you can see it's all shiny on there. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and program this thing up. All right, we got this all done there. Now, sometimes if it is an actual uh, new computer from GM, like I've said before, you'll be able to just start right up. You won't have to do a security learn. So I'm hoping we don't have to do a security learn, but we're gonna find out. Once this is done clearing the codes, I'll let it rip. All right, so we'll go ahead and turn the key off for a second. Go to crank, nothing. Turn the key off, go to crank. And runs. That's a good thing. We do have a check engine light on. I'm expecting a code for the crankshaft creation alert. We'll find out. Two codes. One of them might be security, but we're going to find out. We've got the crankshaft creation learn. We've got to do that. And there's a code of the key not programmed. But it's programmed because it learned the first time the key was turned. So we're going to go ahead. Uh, this thing's got to get warmed up to temperature. It's going to take a little bit. 156, come on. There you go, 158. We're going to hit wide open throttle. Test in progress. Should say learn this ignition. There we go. Next up, we've got another GM product. This is a Buick server side uh, detection system. Both modules have been replaced uh, due to the fact that they corroded in half, I believe is what's going on here. And this is a 2013 Buick Verano. Starting out with a complete vehicle DTC scan. I'm expecting to have those uh, same programming codes we had earlier on the last vehicle, or previous vehicle today, for the uh, side object uh, left, not programmed, but also probably side object right. But actually, we've got no codes. Interesting. Now I found it very interesting that this Buick Verano actually had uh, no codes, but it did have the uh, message for the side object detection modules or side object detection system on the cluster, but there were no codes stored in either the left or right module. However, when I went to program the left module, it definitely had an unrecognized calibration. So I went ahead and programmed that. The shop had told me they replaced both modules, so I went ahead and replaced, uh, or should I say, I went ahead and reprogrammed the right module as well, but that had the proper calibrations in it. So it turns out that uh, after I got all done here, the lights were out, everything was good, uh, but the shop had told me, oh, we only replaced the left one. We thought we were going to do both. I guess they uh, had done both models some time ago, and they were warranting them out or something. I'm not sure. But, guys, that was my day. Pretty busy. I had a good time today. I enjoy days where I get a little bit of a challenge and get to learn and, and have a good time. So if you enjoy this stuff, make sure you hit the thumbs up button and give me a like and subscribe and all that stuff. I would really appreciate that. And if you really want to learn more about basic electricity and electronics and how it applies to automobiles and vehicles, be sure to check out handsonautotraining.com. We've got that membership site up there. I think there's a lot of great information. Be sure to check out the reviews other people are posting. Uh, it seems like the basic electricity class is helping a lot of people out. So you guys have a great evening. Bye-bye.